Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie and let's get started. For DIY number one, I'm going to begin by making some embellishments and I'm going to use these two colors of foam clay. This one is in the white and this other one is in the red. Now this foam clay is pretty squishy and we'll need to condition it a little bit. So I'm going to close these up, seal them back up. And by conditioning, I'm just going to pull and bend and pull and bend until it gets a little bit more firm and not so sticky. And this red is pretty bright and pretty pigmented, but it doesn't leave any residue on your hand. So it's pretty great. So now I'm taking this acrylic roller and I'm just going to roll this out. I'll begin with white. And here I am taking a bamboo ring because I'm going to make some little donuts for embellishments, but spoiler alert, I do not end up using them for this video, but I'm sure we'll see them sometime later on. And at that time we'll paint them to make them look like donuts. But for now they'll just hang out in my video. <laughs> okay, so now I went ahead and rolled out some more of this white and I'm going to roll it on my hat. And now I'm going to just keep rolling it until I get it to the length that I want. Set that up a little bit. And I'm going to do the red, do the same manner, and just start rolling it. And as you roll it, you know it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. So a little bit goes a long way with this foam clay. So now here I'm going to place these two together. And I'm just going to start, start twisting them to try to replicate a candy cane peppermint type of pattern. Now it's not going to be perfect because again, I'm making this and it's homemade and yeah, I'm not going to get it perfect. Spoiler alert, <laughs> but you'll, you'll get the idea. <laughs> so I went ahead and do, did two of these for embellishments and I think this is so much fun. So this is DIY number one and now it's complete. Just allow this to dry. Now onto DIY number two. I'm going to take two of these bless this home home shapes from the Dollar Tree. They're made out of MDF and I removed all the two twine and I did a little bit of sanding which you could probably skip the sanding. You're not going to need to do that after all. So now I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree wood planks. I'm going to use five. There's six in the pack but I just need five and I'm going to make a gingerbread house tissue holder made out of wood and clay. So here I'm trying to figure out how to fit this properly and so this configuration looks like it's going to work pretty well. The only problem is the tissue box is a little bit too tall and my roof panels are a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to need to extend my roof panels and I'm about an inch short on each side. So I'm going to take one of my planks and I'm going to measure out an inch and mark it with a sharpie and get it ready to cut. And to cut it, all I'm going to do is take a very sharp X-Acto knife and I'm just going to score it and just keep scoring and scoring and scoring until it snaps like a cracker. And since this is balsa wood, it's very thin wood, it works perfectly. Here I'm just going to do one more pass and then it'll just pop right up like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this piece and I'm going to use this as a template to create Four more pieces. Now that I have them ready, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding and snipping off any excess splinters or anything that's sticking out. And of course I do this to all four. That way I can adhere them nicely. Now here I have a box of random wood pieces. I don't throw anything away. I like to utilize everything. And I'm going to utilize some of these remnant craft sticks. These jumbo ones are just little remnant pieces that I had left over from other projects. And I'm going to use some of this super glue wood glue and I'm going to use these to adhere the two ends onto the middle piece. That way it extends my roof line all the way across and then some. That way it's pretty cute. So then I went ahead and did this using just remnant pieces like I mentioned. And then I get two like this. Allow these to dry. Now I'm going to remove my box. I'm not going to need it right now and I'm going to take some of these cubes from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use five of these little wood cubes from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to adhere them all with the same super glue wood glue 
allow them to dry and that way I'll have four little stacks of cubes like this. Now I'm going to adhere them to the top of my roof lines that'll extend my roof a little bit and just enough to clear my, my tissue box. So just like this and so far I haven't used any hot glue so far I've only used wood glue. So now I'm going to set this aside allow this to dry completely it doesn't take long this super glue wood glue is really excellent and adheres quickly so just let this dry now here it is nice and dry now I'm going to begin to create my house form and using some more of the super glue wood glue I'm going to add a couple beads on each side of this wood plank and place it inside of these house forms these uh, home decor pieces from the Dollar Tree make sure it's nice tight fit remove any excess adhesive that may, that may drip down and then I go ahead and do the same thing to the other side add some wood glue both sides and place in this piece on the other side like this and I have to work kind of quick because like I mentioned this super glue wood glue it kind of here's pretty quick now here it is nice and dry pretty solid and look my tissue box fits in there perfectly it's gonna be great now I'm going to add my roof panels but before that I'm going to take one roof panel and I'm just showing you that it fits perfectly and now I'm going to take one of the roof panels and my drill with a spade drill bit and using some craft clamps I'm going to clamp my piece of wood onto a chunkier piece of wood that way this I don't cut through onto my mat that would be a disaster so I just go ahead and make this hole like this now you can make this hole a little bit bigger if you want but I couldn't find my bigger spade drill bit but this will do this did, this did fine and I'm just gonna sand off any excess splinters or rough edges on here now here it is nice and ready and so I'm gonna take these two pieces and adhere them in this manner using some of my super glue wood glue again and I'm just gonna add a couple beads onto these cubes and place one roof panel like this and then do the same thing for the other side and place it on there I did have to hold it for a minute or two but it set pretty quickly and so once that kind of stuck on there then I went ahead and took a piece of a bamboo skewer and I added a nice bead of glue down the center of the two roof panels and placed that in the center to help keep everything nice and adhered so now I'm gonna go ahead and allow this to dry now once all this dries I'm going to take my box of remnant wood pieces again and I'm going to pick out some of these I think these are the jumbo craft sticks from Walmart they're just excess and I'm just going to create a chimney but I've never created a chimney <laughs> So this is my thought process here so I figured okay I'm going to leave one of these pieces regular height and then another one I'm just going to cut it down a little bit because I think it's supposed to look that way and then I'm going to take some more pieces and I'm going to cut them at an angle so yeah finally I figured it out and I'm just going to start adhering I'm thinking okay I'm gonna this this is it all or nothing <laughs> now here I did add some hot glue just because I don't have the time to hold this at an angle because the roof is at, a, at, a, at an angle so I placed this first piece down so far so good now this one here is a little bit shorter because my thinking is it's gonna have to look like it's a little bit shorter so I placed that there and then two other pieces I cut them at an angle I can't really see yeah I guess you can kind of see here I'm trying to figure out how to angle them so here I angle it went ahead and cut it and I'm just hoping this will fit this will work <laughs> it looks like it'll work so I just keep cutting it till it, it feels like it'll be right <laughs> add some wood glue and then place it on there and I do the same thing to the other side and then place that piece and voila look at that I have a little chimney 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looking cute. Look at that. Looks legit, guys. That looks legit. <laughs> so I'm putting a piece of painter's tape to hold everything in place while it dries. In the meantime, I'm going to set this aside so it'll dry better. And I'm going to take some of this foam clay. This is in the brown. Again, very sticky at first. And since I'm not going to roll this one out, I only condition it just a little bit. And I'm just going to start placing it on my house and just spreading it and pulling it and spreading it and pulling it. And I just do this throughout the whole house until I get it all covered. Now this took a while and I even had to remove my rings because I was leaving indentions in the, in the clay. <laughs> so here I'm using my roller to help smooth out as many areas as I can. And once I finally got done, then I stuck it in my freezer for overnight for the initial drying of this clay. And then the following day, I stuck it outside. And you know Florida is gonna be hot. So it completely dried that next day. So now here I am, completely done. Now I'm gonna make sure that my little tissue box still fits in there, because if not, it would not be fun. And look, it fits perfectly. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> So now I'm going to take some of the Waverly chocolate in the color hazelnut and I'm just going to touch up the wood that's inside the chimney. I didn't like the way it was just bare and I didn't want to add more clay to make that hole any smaller. So now I have these wood pieces. These are fairy garden pieces I purchased off of Amazon. I've had them for a while. Here's a little door and I also have some windows and I'm going to adhere them onto my little house with some of the Elaine's tacky glue. And I did paint all these white. I like the contrast of the white with the brown. So here I'm going to add one of these round windows up on the front. And then the other windows, I'll add them throughout the outside of the house. Now here are my candy cane embellishments made out of foam clay. So I'm going to use the puffy paint by Tulip to help adhere some of these. And I'm just going to add a nice bead going around the outside of this door. And this will hold my peppermint arch. And by the way, where you see the bare wood, I do paint that with the hazelnut paint as well. So right here, looking bare, but it'll be painted before you know it. <laughs> but look at my little arch. Oh my God, it looks so cute. Yeah, one side is a little thicker than the other, but what can we say? I guess I'm going to have to work on my peppermint arch making skills <laughs> with foam clay. So now here I'm taking some more of my puffy paint and I'm going around the window just to give it that decadent frosting look and I'm taking some of these jumbo straws these I got from Amazon and I'm going to cut them to fit this area like this and I'm going to add some more of the lace tacky glue here and placing them on the sides and I do this to all four sides the two in the front and eventually the two on the back as well and now I'm going to take some of my puffy paint and I'm going to start to create a design on the roof because it's just a clean slate and it's begging for something. So I do a nice thick line on the middle and then I'll proceed to create these diagonal stripes as a classic gingerbread roof pattern in this manner. Now here as I'm working on this, if you notice I start, I'm starting to get some little breaks on my puffy paint bottle. That's not a good sign because that means we're going to start having air bubbles and more little breaks, but it's the only bottle I had left, so it'll be what it'll be. But I wasn't too worried about it because if I make a gingerbread house in real life, I'll probably have more breaks than this. So yeah, it'll look authentic. It'll look like a real gingerbread house. <laughs> so now I'll just continue to add some more embellishments with the puffy paint that I have left in this bottle. Like I said, it wasn't much, but we'll do the best we can. And I'll just keep working on it until I get it to look like this. Look how cute. Some of this paint's still wet, so I'm gonna have to be careful. But here are all four sides. You can kind of see. And now to place my tissue box inside. So exciting. Open up my tissue box, pull out a tissue or two, and then place my box inside and pull out a tissue. And voila, look at that. And here is the front, and here is one side, and here is the other. And a closer look at the final reveal. This video is a part of the Christmas in July Gingerbread Baking Company DIY collaboration. 
and I'm joining some sweet friends and we're all hosting this challenge and we are creating gingerbread DIYs for you guys. So when you're done watching my video, please head on over to my description box, click the link to the playlist and enjoy it. There's only five videos in this whole playlist, so it shouldn't take too long to watch it. For DIY number three, I'm gonna take two of these styrofoam cones from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna take some of this gingham fabric that I also purchased from the Dollar Tree and I cut it in a trapezoid kind of shape. And I'm just gonna take my hot glue gun and do a nice bead of glue and placing one end on the back and stretching it as far as I can and adding another bead of glue beside it and rolling it closed. Now once I get that done, I'm going to take my scissors and do a little trim wherever there's excess fabric. So on the top and then some on the bottom as well. Next, I'll take my hot glue and do a little bit of glue to adhere all these bottom pieces onto the styrofoam cone on the bottom of it. And then I also cut a nice little round to go on top of this to help finish the bottom up. So I'm just gonna add some more glue and then place this on that piece and make sure it's all nice and adhered. And I'm using my silicone spatula so I don't get burnt. So now I'm gonna add some to the top, close this up as well. I do add in a little piece on top a little bit later to finish it up. But here they are, both are done just like that. Now I'm gonna take some of this pom-pom ribbon. I think I got this one at Walmart. And I'm gonna add a little dab of glue and I'm just gonna roll it in a diagonal form because I think this pom-pom trim is so adorable. So I'm just gonna go all the way around and then do another dab of glue at the very bottom right here and hold that in place and then go along the whole bottom that way the pom-poms are kind of just dangling there yeah look how cute I think this is adorable and I'll just go around and pat everything in place and snip off the excess and then I'll do the same thing to my second little tree just like that now I'm taking these two empty ribbon spools and they happen to say burlap and guess what I'm putting on there? Burlap. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wrap a little bit of burlap just to give these trees like a brown tree trunk look. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue and of course my silicone spatula because I will definitely burn myself without it. <laughs> and I'll do the same thing to the second one. And then just to give it another look, I'm going to go in with some of this super cute gingham trim that I purchased off of Amazon. I think the Dollar Tree does have some, but it's a little thicker, but it's really cute. So I'm just gonna add it to the top and bottom of this ribbon spool, just to give it another little look. And I'll do this to both like this and adhere them onto my cone trees to give them a base. And look how adorable. And I did end up painting the very bottom just for good measure. Here I'm placing the second one. And look how cute. So now I'm gonna take some more of this fabric and I'm going to create some quick little bows. This is not the ribbon, this is the fabric itself. And I'm just gonna take some of the baker's twine and tie a little knot to create two bows. And I'm going to dovetail the ends and then place the bows on top. And this one was super simple and super quick. And this is how they look and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number four, I'm taking one of these wooden crates from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take this plaque also from the Dollar Tree that looks like a palette sign and I'm going to go in with the apple barrel paint in the color nutmeg brown and give them all a full coat like this. Next using my Cricut I cut out this stove top and this is pretty fine lines so this took me a little while to get this on there I'm not even gonna lie <laughs> but in the end it was all worth it because it came out so cute. So here I'm just placing it on top of this crate like this. And I also cut out this phrase here, sugar and spice and everything nice. And this one was a little bit easier because the lettering was a little thicker. And I really like this font. It's kind of like a curly font. And I'll have everything in my description box for you guys, what font it is exactly. And I'm gonna place this on my palette in this manner. And once I get this adhered onto my palette sign, then I'll remove this transfer tape. And now I'm gonna take some Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White. 
and I'm going to cover up all my lettering with this white paint and before it dries I'm going to take my weeding tool and I'm going to remove all the lettering to expose this look how cute looking like a bakery huh looking like it was a mess <laughs> now I'm gonna do the same thing with my stovetop and covering up the burners yeah looking like there's powdered sugar everywhere made a big mess <laughs> Once I get that painted, then I'll do the same thing and I'll take my weeding tool and remove all the vinyl in this manner. Now these fine ones are a little bit more intricate, but look at that, it looks so cute. Now I'm going to take this other weeding tool and I'm going to remove any paint that might have gotten stuck in the middle. Now I'm going to take this 60 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand this all up because we don't want these lines to be too perfect. We want them to look like it's been there for a little while and it's been a little aged and yeah this, this little bakery has been around <laughs> now I'll do the same thing with my little stove top now I'm going to adhere them in this manner so now I'm going to take some of my super glue wood glue and I'm going to do a few little globs and also I'm going to use some hot glue for this one and allow that to set up press it down and look at that oh my goodness it looks like a little kitchen now I'm going to use some of my Puffy Paint by Tulip. And for the record, I did this DIY before I did the gingerbread house. So in this particular project, I had plenty of Puffy Paint. So my lines came out better. And now I'm going to take this little set. It's a cooking set from the Dollar Tree in the toy section. And I thought this was perfect for this. Look at this little cute set. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So now here I'm trying to decide what pieces I'm going to use and how I'm going to use them. And I used everything except for the bigger spatula. So now I'm going to take two of these magnets from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to adhere them to the two top corners of my sign with some hot glue. And once they set, then I'm going to take these magnetic hooks also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use these plastic peppermints. They actually fit perfectly on here. I thought this was pretty great. And I'll add these on the top. And now I'm going to take some of this peppermint stripe ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to embellish the middle of this crate with some of this cute ribbon. So I'm just going to add a dab of glue and go around to the front. And then secure another little piece with some glue. Just tiny little dabs. And then to the other side. Next, I'm going to take these little gingerbread men that I picked up off of Amazon and look how cute they, they belong in the kitchen. This one has a little cutting board, so I'll place him on one side. I'll add another one to the other side and then two on the front. And these are actually wooden ornaments from Amazon, so they have little holes on top. So what I did there is I just added some tiny little peppermints to kind of conceal the holes and make them look really cute. So after I have all these placed on here, then I went ahead and took, I took my pots and pans and I went ahead and adhered them onto the stovetop because we're going to fill them up with something delicious looking. But first I'm going to fill them up with a little bit of these foam sheets. I doubled them up, tripled them up, and now I'm going to add some spackle and just kind of spread it on there. And now I'm going to use some puffy paint and get it nice and delicious looking like it's frosted in this manner and here's where I probably use the majority of my puffy paint now that I think about it <laughs> oh my goodness and I'm going to sprinkle some of these polymer clay peppermints that I picked up off of Amazon and then I kind of use my tweezers to help place them in the right place because they all kind of gathered in one spot of course so like this and then I added some more of the puffy paint because I wanted to add a cherry on the top and there wasn't enough for it to hang on to. So here I did another glob of the puffy paint and added my cherry. Then I just added the lid to the very back and then I did the same exact thing to the other pan. And then lastly, I just added a bow to the very top. Here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number five, I'm taking three sets of these burner covers from the Dollar Tree and I'm taking so many because I need three of the smaller ones and these only come with one large one and one smaller one. So I needed 
three smaller ones and one large one and now i'm going to go in with some of this acrylic spray paint from amazon it works great and it's pretty affordable too better than the stores so now i'm going to take these acrylic paint markers and for this diy all i'm going to do is create some faces on these burner covers because these are actually going on my stove nothing fancy about it just two eyes a nose a couple cute little cheeks a mouth eyelashes for the little girls a little bit of lips with the little girls and then i just go around the whole circumference of this circle and do a little bit of frosting this is how they look and this is how they look on my kitchen and a closer look at the final reveal if you're on instagram i invite you to follow me on there this is my qr code and i post on there monday through fridays as well as tiktok i post on there monday through fridays as well this is my qr code for home talk i post on there twice a month here is my pinterest handle i do have a facebook crafting group i invite you to come join us there this is my new threads account and now we're at the final reveal let me know what you think which one's your favorite one A moment and thank my sweet friends for collaborating with me annie from crafting with indiana jones melissa from melissa makes it diy shannon from hot mess crafting and tasha from sunflowers tasha diy be sure to check out the playlist when you're done watching this video it is linked in my description box as well as pinned in my comments for your convenience so definitely check it out click the link enjoy the playlist get tons of inspiration it's never too early to start creating projects for christmas hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please give me a thumbs up i'd really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and if you want to see more definitely subscribe and until my next video stay healthy safe and strong and have a great great day Bye bye